Hey everyone, welcome back to Apollo Art Analysis. In today's episode, we're going to be studying a piece by the established multimedia artist known as Jameson. And in this episode, we're going to be looking at rarity of color. We're also going to explore the difference between minimalism and maximalism. So let's jump right into it. So at first sight, we're met with the scene of a lone skeletal subject pouring something within this simplified gallery here. Our first impression is one of shocks. We just begin to wonder what exactly we're witnessing here. And so one of the first things I notice here is a use of space in the scene. Of course, we have the skeletal subject who is facing the most open portion of the composition. He's also spraying this liquid, which of course adds a sense of weight to the left side of the canvas here. And so colors within this composition largely revolve around gold, lilac, and brown. What's so interesting is how this lilac and this brown almost fight for the viewer's attention in the same way that a blue and a red do. So they kind of clash for that, right? But what I think is most important here is a use of rare color. Of course, the most rare color in the composition is going to be this gold. So any element or any person who has that gold is going to draw our attention quite easily, right? That's going to be our skeletal subject there. Another thing I notice, of course, you can't miss it here, is a sense of texture, right? We have this most present in the kind of roiling form of this strange liquid here that stands in direct contrast to kind of the shiny and rigid form of our subject there. And even with that texture, of course, it's falling, right? So that gives even a sense of implied motion and a sense of visual energy to the composition at hand. I think that's just incredibly important. Of course, all of which immerse us so well within the scene at hand, as if he's destroying it all right before our eyes. So it's stunning, and of course, it does an amazing job of immersing us within the work before us. And with this in mind, you know, what do you think is happening here? So we see the skeleton who appears to be wearing a flamethrower or a paint gun of some kind, and he's just spraying the halls of this great gallery here. So even the choice to have our subject as a skeleton no doubt reveals a bit about the scene at hand, right? When you have the presence of a skeleton or bones more broadly, it always represents the symbolic death of someone or something. And the title of this work is Death to Minimalism, no doubt reveals the moment before us. Our subject has come with destruction in mind and he's just spraying it all across the gallery here it's incredibly interesting and so with this you know we got to mention minimalism and maximalism and so with this i actually have two pieces here to give a bit of contrast between the minimalist and the maximalist i'm going to bring that in real quick and see what we can learn all right so i brought in two pieces here to give a contrast between minimalism and maximalism. So to define minimalism means a really complete abstraction. It's going to be very clear. It's going to be very simplified. And we certainly see that here. So that's really minimalism in its most essence. And then maximalism, on the other hand, is going to be an aesthetic of excess. So an incredible amount of detail. You know, the motto is more is more, while minimalism is less is more. And so we see that quite distinctly in both influences here. Of course, we have, say, an Art Nouveau piece, very stylized, very maximalist minimalist, very detailed, and then of course in comparison to say contemporary works of minimalism such as the one before us here. So very simplified, of course, minimalism compared to an aesthetic of excess such as maximalism. And on that note, the reason I chose Art Nouveau is because they tried to make every piece as unique as possible. And so that is quite distinct from, say, something like the Bauhaus, which is a style of architectural design, which made, you know, mass-produced, very simplified forms that's more reminiscent of minimalism. So in direct contrast to that, we have every piece is very unique, and that's going to be maximalism, such as Art Nouveau here. So yeah, that's a bit about the difference between minimalism and maximalism. You know, over the course of the 2010s, we saw a massive resurgence in minimalism, perhaps in a bid to escape the overwhelming effects of technology, right? We're always getting notifications. We're kind of always listening to music. There's almost no escape from it. So it's almost, you know, inevitable that minimalism would make a resurgence. So, you know, now we see minimalism is kind of on the decline, right? We see a lot of people reviving that kind of Y2K aesthetic, that maximalist sense, and even even in the composition before us here, it certainly is not minimalist. Of course, there's so much going on in the composition. There's so much detail. There's so much energy to the work at hand. And due to that, it definitely couldn't be minimalism. So like I said, the title of this work is Death to Minimalism. He's clearly come with destruction in mind, and he's certainly doing that here. But of course, such is the constant cycle of conceptual design. You know, we go from minimalism to maximalism before we go back and forth, back and forth. And so, you know, with this in mind, you know, what do y'all lean towards? Do y'all like minimalism or do you like maximalism more? 
course, some people like minimalism due to its, you know, tranquil, simplified nature, while others like maximalism due to its, you know, kind of one of a kind quality, like the Art Nouveau work that we looked at real quick. So, like I said, uh, you know, what do y'all lean towards? Do y'all like minimalism or do you like maximalism? I actually like both. It's uh, kind of hard to pin down, you know, I see the necessity in both. So, due to that, I, of course, like both as well. So, really hope y'all enjoyed today. This is a really fun and even satirical piece, if you will. It was created in the digital illustration medium of expression. So, of course, painstakingly painted upon a screen. If you even look closely upon the work, you can see the brush strokes within the canvas as well. I think that's incredibly important here. Of course, so much work goes in to create a work like this. And of course, we love the symbolism. I think it was an amazing opportunity to talk about minimalism and maximalism, which of course, both define one another by their existence, kind of like the yin and yang. So like I said, I really hope y'all enjoyed today. We talked about so many different things from, you know, rarity of color, drawing our eye to the subject, the cycle of minimalism and maximalism, you know, the influence of texture within this work, so many different things we hit on today. I truly hope y'all enjoyed. Enjoyed. If y'all enjoyed today's episode, make sure to check out the original artist Jameson, doing some amazing stuff in the world of digital illustration, as well as a little bit of animation as well. So, like I said, really hope y'all enjoyed today. If y'all enjoyed today's episode, make sure to check out the original artist Jameson, and like I said, doing some amazing stuff in the world of art. So, my name is Apollo, this was Apollo Art Analysis, and I'll see y'all on the next episode. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you'd like to support our work directly, please check out our Apollo community tokens. Apollo Art Exchange is an ecosystem of art appreciation which elevates artists each and every day. Thanks for listening.